I wish I knew what I know today when it comes to wedding photography. When I started off my wedding photography journey, it was a bumpy ride because I didn't put in all of the homework. I didn't do all of the necessary things in order for me to be successful on it. And I learned along the way. After my first wedding, I went back and I started to familiarize myself with as much as I possibly can in order for me to become better at what I needed, at what I needed to do. So here's a couple of do's and don'ts when it comes to wedding photography plan ahead every wedding photographer that is out there whether it be someone that is currently amateur level in, uh, intermediate or pro they all plan ahead you need to ensure that you know exactly what it is that you're going to do on the day uh, what is required of you on the day where and what it is that you're going to shoot when you have spoken to the client they've already given you where the ceremony is going to happen where the reception is going to happen and where everything is going to happen as a photographer, it is your responsibility to be familiar with those places. Go and do location scout. If where the bride is getting ready, where the groom is getting ready. Make sure that you go to the church or to the place where the ceremony is happening, knowing exactly what time of day the light is going to sit where, what lights they have inside of the venue to ensure that when you do get there, you are fully prepared. You have all of the necessary equipment in order for you to do what you need to do on the day. Communicate clearly. So one thing that I've implemented as part of my work so when it comes to wedding photography is putting a timeline in place. So I provide the wedding couple with a timeline. If you also have a timeline that you can adhere to. So if you have given your client a time of, I'll be spending a total of 10 hours there for the day. Everything that needs to happen within that 10 hours needs to be structured accordingly. Works for me, it works for the cup, for all of my clients that I've worked with. It just makes everyone's life easier. Be adaptable. We know that wedding, the, the things tend to happen along the way. If something does happen, try to adapt as quickly as possible. In the video that I did not too long ago, where I had issues with my camera on the day of the wedding, I needed to make changes that I needed to adapt. I needed to say, okay. Think quickly, make a change, still get the photos that you need to in order for us to proceed and in order for us to try to maintain and stay within the time and that has been associated or that has been assigned to a specific activity on the day of the wedding. Number four, a posed wedding is a very boring way. <laughs> That's my, my, my sentiment. A wedding is all about emotion. Take those candid shots. Take the shots of the kids that is running up and down. Take the shots of the bride that is laughing with a father or father-in-law and uh, friends and what and capture those things because that is a true essence of the emotion of the wedding a wedding is all about that candid all about that emotion you're capturing emotion you're going out there with the intent to capture the emotion and the memories of this day so when they look back at it they then start to realize wow this happened here this happened here everyone was laughing i, I forgot about this piece here and that piece was fun there and so forth so those brings back those memories and every wedding couple wants to see those episodes back up your work and back up your work immediately when you get back to the wedding so there's two ways that you can actually back up your work the first one is that on your camera you have the capability of setting your camera to capture raw as well as jpeg so you have both of these file types available to you if something does happen to the raw files, the JPEGs are still there. If something does happen to the JPEGs files, the raws are still there. The second option is obviously the second way is obviously to back up when you are coming and you're transferring everything back onto your PC. When that comes from a SD card, instead of cutting copy it rather, so you still have the original copy on the SD card. So if something does happen during the course of the transfer of the file you know that you'd still have the backup there and once everything is copied onto your pc's hard drive now you copy it and from there again you copy it onto an external hard drive so you have three copies that is currently running so once you know that you have those two copies available now you can clear off the sd card so you make sure that you have those backups anything can happen during the course of you currently busy editing you don't want to be the person that spoils everything for them so let's get into the don'ts don't be rude and disrespectful I tend to get two people involved, the maid of honor and the groomsman. The main reason that I actually do that is I don't want to disrupt everything that is happening at the moment. As an example, the ceremony just finished and we are now going and there's now the confetti toss and they're coming through the, the gauntlet and so forth. When all of that is done, the, the thing that usually happens immediately after that is all of the friends and family 
comes and they start to congratulate you as a photographer you don't know the people at the wedding now they are busy speaking to guests and you as a photographer come and you walk into the space here now you come and pull these people away from them because you need to get to the location in order for them to go into a location it's very active I will then be in contact with the maid of honor and the, and the best man because they are part of the wedding party. They also know that there are things that need to happen so they can go into the crowd and the crowd will not take it as disrespectful as for someone that they don't know coming in here and pulling the wedding away from. When you do the family photo, you as a wedding photographer, you don't know the family. You don't know all the friends. Best man and the maid of honor, they do. You then go up to the bride, to the maid of honor, and you tell the maid of honor, can you please go ahead and call all of the bride's family and just add them close so that the next couple of photos are going to be only for them. Don't ignore the details. The wedding couple spent a lot of money to ensure that everything that is at the wedding looks the way that they want it to look. And they want memories of it. So your responsibility is to go ahead and capture all of these things. You can use that as part of your composition because now you know already okay, there's a nice chandelier on this side, there's a nice light there in the corner there, the cake is standing over there and whatever. The be. It makes your life easy as well. Don't miss key moments. If you miss it, 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 you can't get it back. You can't get the first keys back. Uh, you can't get the first dawn back. So those are things that you need to be ready for. The first dawn, the dance with my father, the garter toss, the bouquet toss, all of those things. You need to be ready for all of those. Don't overlook communication. You need to be clear on what it is that the couple wants. The bride usually has a vision. Use that vision that is shared from a bride's perspective. And make that part of your, okay, this is what I, as a wedding photographer, need to ensure that I communicate with the photos that I catch. Make sure that the couple is comfortable with the style of photographer that you are. I don't know if you saw, not too long ago, there was this issue with the sepia bride thing. Where this photographer, all of her edits was in sepia. The client saw that it was in sepia. When the client received the photos and the photos came to her in, sep in sepia, the client then didn't like it after a while. A couple tends to choose you based off your style of photography. So when it is that you are meeting with a couple for the first time, make sure that you show them enough of your work and your work, is, your work should consistently be so this is the style of my photography. Me, I take, I take a clean photo. There's two things that I will do. I will clean up, color correct, whatever the case may be. And a second option would be I will go black and white. This is the only two things. That filters and so forth and, and, and presets. I don't do that in wedding photography. The people that prefer to take photos with me, they know already that I'm going to give them a clean. So when the wedding couple comes to you, make sure that they are comfortable with the type and the style of photos that you take. 